My mom used to get so pissed off at me because I used to make such a mess in her kitchen, <laughs> especially after blending all the chilies and spices. So I'm going to come back and clean this up. Yeah, I'll be back when I get back. <laughs> I knew she was going to clean it for me. When I got home, it was all nice and clean. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Located on the eastern edge of the Sonoran Desert, Tucson, Arizona is home to an abundance of Mexican heritage restaurants and food trucks. We have, for a city our size, the largest percentage of local young restaurants in the United States. According to locals, the Old Pueblo has the best 23 miles of Mexican food north of the border, a journey I was eager to take. All right, we're on Tucson's Taco Trail, and this time we're heading to Taco Zapsong which has been cooking up some of the best mesquite grilled tacos this side of the Mexican border for over 20 years. To learn more about the region's cuisine, we met up with Felipe Garcia, food blogger and Visit Tucson CEO. So Felipe, what is the Tucson food scene all about? The local food scene is about who we are, our history, our food ways, and it goes thousands of years. People don't realize when you look in the United States, the place that has been inhabited continuously for the longest, it's here, it's Tucson. So the food scene right now, it's about being proud and embracing who we are. We don't adapt to try to be like someone else. It's about local food cuisine. That is what we call the Sonoran style of Mexican food. What kind of foods in particular define the cuisine here? So the Sonoran Desert is a part of the world that it's from Southern Arizona, state of Sonora, Mexico, a little bit of Baja, a little bit of Chihuahua. So the Sonoran Desert is also part of Sonoran food and Sonoran food is very simple food. A lot of meats, a lot of flour, but it's really using simple quality local ingredients. And that's what makes it again so unique. So what can we expect from Taco Zapson? The very basic is taco de carne asada. And the best taco de carne asada, there's three components to it. A flour tortilla, not a corn. Then the second part is going to be the beef. Great beef, great steaks, actually raised both sides of the border. And the last part, that beef, grilled with mesquite wood. And mesquite is just an amazing, generous tree that grows everywhere here in the desert, and it changes completely the texture, the flavors of your food. All right, well, you've made me very hungry just talking about it, so what do you say we go in and, and try some tacos? I have never say no to a taco. <laughs> <laughs> Yasmin and Francisco Aldecoa Dorazzo opened their Sonoran Taqueria in 2001. So what's it like running a restaurant with your husband? We have two locations, so he's in charge of one, and I'm fully charged of the other one, so it makes a big difference. <laughs> Strategy. <laughs> the name of the restaurant is an homage to Francisco's family history. Apson is an abbreviation for his hometown, Agua Prieta, Sonora. It's also the name of his father's famous 1960s band, Los Apson. What is Tacos Apson known for throughout Tucson? We have different things, but the most special, I will say, is that, of course, the asada. It has to be the classic asada the rasurado, which is the shaved ribs, and we just like shave the, the rib, the meat of the rib, and we just put them on a tortilla, simple as that. Can we go see how the uh, the tacos are made? Yes, Francisco's waiting for us in the back waiting. Francisco starts each day by lighting the mesquite charcoal and preparing the coals. Cooking with the charcoal, it is 100% Sonora style. When the flames die down and the coals begin to glow, the grill is ready. Francisco slaps thin cut chuck steaks onto the grates. The carne asada is the main dish in a, in, a, in a taco shop. If you don't have carne asada, then what else are you gonna eat? <laughs> <laughs> he then seasons the top side with a generous layer of coarse sea salt to let the true flavor of the beef and wood smoke come through. On one side only, that's all you need. Just leave it there for minutes, and then when you start seeing the juice coming out of the steaks, it's ready to flip them. A few short minutes later, Taco Zapson's biggest seller was ready to serve. From here to the lunchtime, Probably you're gonna need like a 40 to 50 pounds. Depends on the day. What's it, the weekend is a little bit more. Next on the grill were the ribs for the Tacos Rasorados, a specialty of Tacos Apson known for their rich beefy flavor and distinct chew. I started uh, picking up ideas from uh, different taco shops in Mexico. I said, oh, I've never seen this before, so I was surprised that if I take it uh, to Arizona and I do this, it's gonna be a boom. <laughs> <laughs> when the juice begins to exude from the top side of the ribs and dissolve the salt, then it's time to flip. When the second side is done, Francisco cuts them between the bones. Yeah, it's still red inside. He puts them back on the grill, cut side down, and again applies a heavy layer of salt. Charcoal salt to me. He repeats this on the last side. I am uh, very excited to eat this. 
<laughs> these ribs, the, the cut sides of the ribs are bubbling with the fat. It's really nicely browned. And the smell is, is it's a little bit different from the carne asada. It's got just, it's kind of not like a burning fat smell, but it's like a smokiness to it that didn't exist with the carne asada. And these look right up my alley. Francisco shaves the ribs with a large chef's knife. Bits of fatty meat and sinew, which add texture and flavor to the tacos, all pile up on the board. To finish, Francisco simply warms the flour tortillas and meat on the flat top and serves them up with grilled spring onions and jalapenos. This is the rasurado taco. It's all you need. Before we eat, Felipe and I hit the salsa bar. People will tell you, no, you don't do that way. This is my favorite way everyone has, and all are good, so whatever you prefer. Yeah. We dressed our tacos with cabbage, pickled onions, and a variety of salsas made from grilled tomatoes, tomatillo, and avocado. Put one of these, put a little bit of that, and try the other one with the pickled one. Okay. It will change completely the flavor. All right. Some pico de gallo. Some people call it pico de gallo. If you go further south, they call it salsa bandera, the flag salsa, because yeah. it's red, white, and green. All right. And of course, you always have to put all right. limes on it. So put a few limes. Nice, nice. Looks right. good? Yeah, let's go eat. Excellent. <laughs> Finally, we were joined by Francisco and Yasmin to enjoy our lunch. We started with the tacos rasuradas. Like it? <laughs> I more than like it, I love it. I love how the, the meat, the rasurado is so rich, but you really get that smoky mesquite coming through, mm -hmm. through the whole thing. You can smell it while it's being cooked, but you really taste it here. And something beautiful you notice here, it's simple ingredients, so you cannot hide anything, mm -hmm. you cannot cheat. So yeah. These guys, they do an amazing job, especially when you're charring the meat on the grill. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Next was a classic carne asada. And this is a carne asada taco. That's like your base taco. When you go yeah. to a place, okay, that's like your, you The number you one judge. that you have to get. Okay. You judge a place by their carne asada taco, and you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm in a good place. First taco in the menu, carne asada. Carne asada, <laughs> yeah. yes. Carne asada. Very different flavor than the rasurado. You still get that mesquite smoke coming through. Mm -hmm. Seems like the flavor of Tucson taquerias is mesquite. It is mesquite, right. yeah. The mesquite the delivery of unique flavor to the carne asada and yeah. it is totally different. Uh, what do you think makes tacos Epson so, so special to Tucson? Try to keep it simple and Mexican tradition. These simple dishes with their bold earthy smoke flavor make it clear why this family owned taqueria is considered a pillar of Sonoran cuisine in Tucson. Well, thank you so much for having us today. The food You're was welcome. wonderful. You guys are all wonderful. Cheers. My Tucson experience is so much better. Cheers. 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 Salud, salud. Salud. Cheers. A few tacos later, we continued our journey down historic 12th Avenue toward another Tucson original with its own spin on classic dishes. We're going to Rolly's Mexican Patio to meet with the chef owner, Mateo Otero. Now this guy has been voted as having the best beer here for the last three years in a row. Uh, he makes a fantastic case of birria taco and also really cool birria ramen, which I am super excited to try. The dishes at Rolly's represent Tucson cuisine filtered through Mateo's unique personality. Since I was five years old, I really knew I wanted to be a chef. Yeah. My brother and sister were watching cartoons and I was burning bacon and eggs for everybody. But <laughs> After a successful career in the catering business, he was encouraged by friends and family to open his own brick and mortar restaurant. Started catering business for 13 years. I was always making Facebook posts to advertise for my catering and people were like, open up a restaurant already. So I found something small, opened up shop and been success. <laughs> Although it's named for their rolled fried tacos, the star on Rolly's menu is the birria, savory beef braised with chilies and spices. It's a celebration plate. Every quinceanera you went to, every wedding you went to, any South Mexican celebration, it was birria, rice, and beans. When Rolly's first opened, birria was only featured on the menu once a week, but by popular demand, Mateo added it to the standing menu. Every Thursday, it was called birria Thursdays. We had a lines out the door. So I figured, you know what? Let's start doing birria every day. Did you notice an uptick in business when you started putting birria on the menu? Oh yeah, big time. Originally from Jalisco, Mexico, Traditional birria is made with goat, but in Tucson, birria means beef. You know, a lot of people do the birria and I feel they put too much spice in there. And this goes back to where in Jalisco, when everybody was doing it, the goat, I feel like they were using heavy on the spice to kill the gaming of the goat. When we started doing more beef, you don't really need too much spice. You know, it's beef. Beef is delicious. <laughs> The birria starts with a spice rub for 20 pounds of beef. First, I'm gonna start off with this delicious Santa Cruz chili. See, it's a local ingredient. We got a little granulated onion right here, garlic salt, just granulated garlic. 
And you know, you want some fat in there. Fat, fat is a secret. It then adds tomatoes, garlic, onion, and a blend of chilies. Okay, so for this onion, I'm just gonna cut it up, clean it up, and just throw it in whole. Fresh garlic. Remember, we have all that garlic on the rub. We have garlic salt and granulated garlic on the rub. So right here we have pasilla chilies and guajillo chilies. A secret blend of at least nine spices is added, but Mateo is vague about the particulars. The secret pouch right here. This goes in. Oh. <laughs> You're definitely uh, withholding information last time I was oh, here. Oh, and chili albol. <laughs> oh, and chili albol. <laughs> this is another little secret ingredient right here. So what is that? It's just a little cinnamon, just a pinch, just a pinch. Okay. The pot is filled with water and placed on the stove. I'm gonna put this on low and this is gonna cook for five hours. After a long simmer, Mateo pulls the chilies, vegetables, and spice pouch from the pot. So this is all gonna get blended up and it's going back into the pot. Here's the famous sack right here. You do not want to uh, blend back in. Add a little broth. So we're about to blend this and add everything back in. After the blended chilies and vegetables are put back into the braise, the birria simmers overnight in a 200 degree oven. After the long cook, Mateo uses an unusual piece of kitchen equipment to break apart the beef. So it's a tile scraper from, right. the, from the hardware store down the street. <laughs> it works really good. I'm gonna skim the fat from the top and I'm gonna put it back into the meat. And I feel this is another step that I, that I do that maybe a lot of other people don't. And that's why it makes in my video, extra special. I have the right ratio of fat and broth inside back into the video. So the best flavor is the fat. <laughs> you gotta, you know, you want to have fat in your video. For the birria finally ready, it was time to make tacos. So with all that fat we skimmed off, now we have it right here. So now I'm getting my yellow corn tortillas, dipping them in that birria fat. Get it nice and crispy, all that oil. Once it sit for a while, give it a flip. Then what you want to do is you want to add your cheese next. I use mozzarella. Monterey Jack is good as well, you know. If you want to get real Mexican, you're going to get the Oaxacan cheese. <laughs> so now I got that cheese on. You don't want to let the cheese melt all the way through because then it's going to turn it into a cheese cracker. Probably about 30% melts it down and then I'll, add, then I'll add my meat to it. So I'm gonna put the birria down on one side. So I always like to do cheese first, then the meat. I have the cheese on both sides so when they can get nice and gooey together. Fresh diced onion, fresh cilantro. Famous roly sauce here, which is a spicy mayo with different chilies. This is good with everything, it's even good on pizza. So now I'm gonna flip the tortillas, nice and toasty. It's a perfect crispness right there. So you see that media fat pan frying the tacos, all that sizzle, that's from the fat. So our media rojos are also served with our consomme right here to dip your taco in, which is delicious. Some Mexican ajou right here. And these are Rolly's media rojos, AKA quesadillas, Rolly style. That's so good, man. You can really taste the warm spice in here. It's in there, but it's not overpowering. Yeah. I gotta say, like, the move where you put the mayonnaise in the taco, it really helps it feel more creamy, more cheesy. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the warm spice, the variety of chilies, the mayonnaise sauce. The fat, I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. fat makes everything good. That's what that mayo even gives it that extra. I, I realize now that there's a lot you left out when you told me about birria last time we <laughs> met, because mine is nowhere near as good as this. Next up, a delicious combination that put rollies on the map when times were tough their famous birria ramen. During the pandemic, this was saved me too. And, you know, we had people coming in, ordering at the window. We'll go run it out to their cars, but we had a line of people coming in just for the birria ramen. When we first started doing this, we would have, we opened at 11 o'clock, we already had like 50 sold before we even opened. A simple dish, the recipe starts with the noodles. And so right now, what I'm doing is I'm massaging the noodles out, separating them. You don't want to ever, you don't want to rip these. And I like the yakisoba noodles better than the instant ones because they taste more fresh. And with that hot broth I got, we'll finish them off like in a minute. So right here we have the six ounces of the yakisoba noodles. Perfect consistency. So then I'm gonna put about five ounces of birria in here. The cup is filled with the spicy birria broth and garnished with fresh toppings. So now we're just gonna finish it with a little bit of cabbage. 
course, birria goes good with cilantro and onion. And I top it off with fresh jalapeno. This is our famous Rollies birria ramen. The combination of savory beef, Mexican spices, and Japanese noodles make for an unbelievable flavor. It's even better than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> you can taste the jalapeno coming through there. Yeah, the jalapeno gives it that nice bite. And the garnishes, the onion, the cabbage, really changes the entire complexity of the broth, you know? So it's it's different enough from that, the, the quesadilla tacos where you're just dunking it yeah, and consuming yeah. it, but that's really fantastic, man. Everything's fantastic. Thank you. With a storied history and creative, passionate chefs, Tucson strikes a unique balance between its rich food traditions and culinary innovations. So what is it that you think makes the Tucson food culture so unique? Where we're standing right now, we're in Tucson, Arizona, but this was Mexico longer than it has been the U.S. And those traditions, that history has stayed here. And that's, I think, that sets us apart from other places around the world, I think. Keeping the food traditional, how you grew up eating it, but pass on a little twist to it, to, your, to the next generation. These Tucson chefs are continuing the story of this incredible region, expressing their heartfelt passion and dedication, one taco at a time. It's wonderful to see people, old customers, for years and years. Yeah. You feel proud of them. I want to send a special thank you to Mateo and all the crew here at Rollies for showing us the ins and outs of birria and birria ramen today. If you like what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe, and let us know in the comments where we should travel to next.